Hello and welcome to Ask Miss Mears, where we answer your most burning questions and solve your most nagging problems. I won't always know the answer, but I'll know someone who will. I invited today's guest to make us eat our vegetables, but I think she won't need to do that because after the show, we'll want to do so on our own. This writer, editor, wife, and mom is the founder of Mesa Nemesis, a nonprofit organization that advocates the healthy cooking and eating of local plant-based meals using local vegetables. She's also the author of Mesa Nemesis, a guide to cooking and enjoying native Filipino vegetables. Please welcome Juana Manahan Yupanko. Hi, Hi Mirza. How are you? Thank you for having me. I'm good. I love your background. So oh. sorry. Kahit na umuula na sa labas. <laughs> I love yours. When and I have a... Yeah, I have a lean plate like yours. <laughs> so, how are you? What did you have for lunch? I'm curious. Today for lunch, I just had a pet chai salad with corn and garbanzo. I had a lot of it. So, like when right. I eat a salad, it's like as big as my face. So, oh, my vegetables and and more vegetables. I'm excited to show you later what I'm having for dinner. Yeah, we're excited. <laughs> so. For those who don't know, Juana and I used to work together in the same office over a decade ago. That's right. <laughs> in country, and I must say that she looks even younger and hotter now. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Is it something to do with eating plants? Absolutely. <laughs> yes. You know, when I started, um, I switched to a plant-based diet roughly three years ago. The first thing I noticed was my skin. I used to get like very sensitive skin with bumps and um, period pimples. Sorry, is that TMI, but hormonal. Right, right. And when I switched, that went away um, and it got a lot clearer. So yeah, big benefit of plant-based eating. Right, and did you also lose a lot of weight or? I lost 24 pounds. Oh my gosh. <laughs> like a In little, like a child. In the span of three years, um, over the three years, like so, right. when I when I started, I started very slow. So I was like, okay, I can still like I took out all the meat, took out the eggs, but you know, I was eating rice and bread. So at first, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm gaining weight. Like, what's happening? Um, like just being vegetarian or vegan. Then I realized there's a difference in being whole food, plant based. And that means like eating, I have some veg here today, but like if you eat a whole kamote as opposed to like kamote bread or um, kamote fries, right. stick to, to all of that. So I lost like a big bulk of the weight, I'd have to say this year during lockdown. Oh. Um, because I like, I was losing like a little bit, but like a huge chunk of it happened during lockdown because Brennan, you don't want to eat junk or like it was fun right. for a while and you realize oh my gosh we don't know how long we're gonna be here i can't exercise i can't right right go out um yeah so we, i just went back to basics and my gosh it really and i was never really hungry doing it and when you say junk you mean plant junk? So even if there's you are already eating plants, there is junk? What do you mean by there's that? There's a lot of junk. Um, like Oreos are vegan, well, for one thing. <laughs> <laughs> but there's a lot of stuff like fried mushroom chicharron or- That's um, junk? See, it's, well, it's fried. <laughs> oh you know, my you know you, that's my cheat nah. Oh, wow. Ever. Right. That's my cheat now. Or like lots of pasta or lots right. of pancit. That's like, right. you know, technically it's made from rice, but there's right. not much nutrients in it. So, so I, I cut guess, all of that out for a while. I guess that's also very starchy and high glycemic. Yeah. Like um, the thing with like plant-based eating is like we don't really concentrate so much on like your macros. So like you have normally you have like protein, carb, and fat, right? Technically vegetables is mostly carb, but it has protein and, and, and fat. Right. So it's a complete right, right. vegetable. But definitely once you isolate it and it turns into pancit, it took out all the vitamins already. <laughs> Right. So when you eliminate the junk, 
would you say that it's pretty effortless? Like, do you count calories? Do you? I don't Measure count calories. Anything. So how do you know how much to eat? You stop when you're full. Would you say it's pretty effortless? I'd say so, but it was a big struggle for me. Like I used to like have my fitness pal and punch in all the calories. Like I was so used to, to counting right. calories and, and all of that. So it took a while for me to get used to it. But I realized when you're eating just straight, um, plants you don't really have to worry so much and for us like at home with mess and missus we focus on a bahai kubo kitchen so right. it's even more local less right. processed um less right. transported right we'll show them the bahai kubo vegetables later i found that so cute so, <laughs> so when you say plant-based is it the same as being vegan and are you and your family actually vegan I suppose it's the same as being vegan. So we don't consume eggs or dairy. And yes, the, the whole family is. After like two years, everyone just transitioned. First it was me and my husband, Rick, and then the kids slowly right. got into it as well. Um, and it wasn't overnight. We, we eliminated things slowly and as we could tolerate it. Because I feel like if you go into it, big la, big la, right. you're gonna, you know, you'll, you'll be like, why am I doing this? Like, you'll feel like you're being <laughs> punished, ba. Right. And I'm especially interested in the kids because mm -hmm. everybody knows it's hard to make kids eat their vegetables. So how did you actually do that? I got my kids involved um, in cooking. So there was a time my son would only eat kamote or only eat potatoes. Um, so we said, okay, let's let's bake stuff. With, let's do baked potatoes or let's do something. I don't know if you want to see it now, but he sure. made a little something for us sure, to show sure. you. So this is um, this is kamote, or you know, regular kamote that we have. And my son Jaime turned it into let me see gnocchi. So normally, oh, wow. this is our dinner tonight. Um, and he is an aspiring chef, so he made this, and. I love the recipe so much. I included it in my cookbook and it's really, it's something that he made and he loves it. So now like they're in the kitchen now, like rolling away, <laughs> making it by hand. Cause that's what they're going to have for dinner. Um, and that's really how I got them to be engaged in um, eating more plant-based stuff. I let them cook and I let them add to, to what they're cooking. Right. And how about your husband? <laughs> oh, he's a, he is a big meat eater. So back in the day, like his vegetable was a potato. Oh my like God. that's a vegetable enough for him or like there's fries or like a side salad. So his thing in mind is he loves stuff with sauce. So I like in the book, there's like a, there's a chapter on mains. And um, if you look through it, it's like really saucy stuff. Yeah. Like, yeah. Um, cause he does like, he'll never really eat like a dry thing. So I, I really adjusted to like the needs and the wants of my family. And that's uh, the basis of a lot of the recipes in the book. Right. And did you do it for other reasons besides did you do it for humanitarian reasons aside from health? You know, like that stuff kind of, um, it didn't it, like. It, it's not that's not the first reason why we did it primary reason was health um and then once like we started reading more into it and learning about the impact that um eating a lot of meat has on the environment and then like you know you start reading and you find out more and more and more and it, it becomes like oh my gosh like this is how they kill a cow pala right. you know and you're like ah <laughs> I don't want to do that again. And then, yeah, it just, you just discover like this whole other aspect of like the food, like how your food is produced. Um, and it's, it's fascinating. Um, in fact, I'm taking a master's right now in global food security and nutrition wow. because, because of my interest in it and also to help support what I do. So like, I, right. I kind of know something to mind. <laughs> Right, right. But tell us your story. How did this all start? Like, is it true that your driver story actually inspired you? Yes. Oh, I love how you know that. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, he was my driver, like five, um, my mom's driver, who's been with us for like 30 plus years since I was two, three years old. Um, he got diabetes and the complications that come with it. So he couldn't see, he kept bumping our car. And my mom thought like, oh my gosh, he's just becoming like a bad driver. What's happening to him? You know, he was going blind gosh. until one day, um, it was really bad. Like we almost lost him. Um, and then he, once he got cured, the doctor said, you need to stop eating meat for a while until you get better. And then we saw him like, um, he stopped working for our family. He went to go rest. Um, and he was just coming into the house to do like housework like that. And then one day he was back and my mom goes, you know, he can see again and he can, he can drive again. And we found out he changed his diet to a plant-based diet. So I thought, my gosh, if he can do it on his salary and, right. you know, with access to food that he has, right. then why can't I do it? Why can't everybody do it? Right. And then I found out he was eating like, yeah, kamote, pet chai, like your bahay kubo vegetables. Right. Um, and it is amazing. And he's still strong up to now you know so that yeah. was that really inspired me right right and why why should actually we go plant-based you studied plant-based nutrition i did uh, yeah and and what are the things that you found out like what are some of the myths actually about nutrition for plant-based eating people that uh pervade like people might say Nako, you have no protein because you're just eating. Yeah, that I think that's that's number one, I think. Like right. protein and calcium are the number one. But the truth is things like beans, even broccoli, um, have a lot of protein in them. And like I said earlier, it's not like um, when you eat meat, it's just protein. You can combine it. So if you eat your rice with your beans, you know, in the end, that whole meal will serve your protein intake. Um, the other day, somebody on on TV5 interviewed me and they said, is it true about cow's milk that there's not that much calcium? I said, you know, there's more calcium in alugbati and there's more calcium in broccoli right. and spinach. Right. right. So you don't really need um, all those animal uh, products. Right. In fact, Things like casein, which are in which is in dairy, um, right. has been known to trigger cancer. Wow. So, and um, eating animal products has a lot to do with um, uh, uh, triggers a lot of non-communicable diseases like heart disease, cancer, hypertension, diabetes. Of course, the Philippines is number one for um, hypertension, diabetes because we love our pork, right? Right. Right. You also yeah. talked about in a previous interview that there's a vicious cycle of uh, underprivileged people who have a cycle of eating badly. Yeah. And then because they have no money, they actually don't know that vegetables are so cheap and it could just solve the whole cycle of disease. And they end up spending all their money for hospital bills. Do you want to yes. tell us? It's. Um... It's terrible. I'm sure everybody, um, I'm sure there's people in your audience who are watching now. They've had helpers, people who are like family to us and they get sick or their family member gets sick and they end up having to borrow money from you or their relatives and it all goes to bills. And when you look at the root cause of it, like there's nothing really inherently wrong with them. It's all diet related. So unfortunately, um, they they tend to eat a lot more processed stuff, right? And you know they can't access like grass fed Mulwara beef from okay. Australia and like organic Norwegian wild caught salmon. Like they, the truth is they don't. The quality of meat um, available to them is just not that good, um, and they can't even afford a lot of it. So a lot of the stuff that's going in their food is preservatives, artificial flavors that's really causing the diabetes, the insulin resistance for them. And it's a terrible, terrible, terrible cycle. Um, when I go out to talk to them, when we do our community talks, uh, I still am amazed that 
there's some myths that they they really believe um, that these things are are okay to eat. Um, it's a little bit shocking for them. Half the time, I'm like trying to convince them like that I'm I'm right <laughs> or like. But um, yeah, it's actually, it's, it's what amazing. like what do they believe about? Um, one thing which shocked me was margarine. So they they really believe that it will make your kid taller because there's a billboard on edsa oh <laughs> that says so um another thing is like betchin or um flavorings right it, there's nothing wrong with it like they really but really that stuff causes insulin resistance right and that's diabetes for you and hypertension because it's all sodium right. and um we do this thing we we have this chart that we show them and it shows like comparators and you'll see that in terms of price um plant-based eating with local vegetables is 50 percent cheaper right i remember yeah. when my dad was battling <laughs> uh, prostate cancer so he and my mom went vegan mm. and the, the health wow. complained they're like Wala kaming makain. Ayaw namin kumain ng gulay. So my parents had to actually buy pork just for the help. Yeah. Because they also refused to eat vegetables. And I think Filipinos as a whole, I don't know, in general maybe, they're not so keen on eating vegetables. Maybe because it hasn't been presented to them in a way that they like. Like I think so. Um, like a lot. And... I don't know, they think ninety salama bubusog or it's just but if you think about it, the average meal that you find in a carinderia, it's mostly rice. That's true. With like just bits of carrot and like a oh, chicken wing. They're right. not really it's not really meat. It's like right. a lot of starch and processed thing. And I think uh, it also has like a lot to do with the mentality that um you need the the protein, you need the chicken, you need the right. pork to right. be healthy. Um, right. it's a it's very it's a it's an up up uphill battle for me when it right. comes to that. And um, I really hope the cookbook um, is a way to to help uh, transition more people to plant-based eating. Right. Okay, so before we go on our uh, mission to convert the audience, let us share <laughs> snippets from the cookbook so that maybe we can whet their appetite. All right, so that's the cover. Yes. Very nice cover. You wanna give a general intro about what to expect? Yeah, so as it says on the cover, 40, um, delicious and I highlight affordable recipes because I really um, built the recipes to fit within a budget of 250 to 350 pesos because that is um, what I learned was the average amount that families spend on a meal so this can feed up to four people okay. um, six if you're not big eaters so that's why there's a big emphasis on affordable and like it says it's a guide because the first part of the book i think you have it like i think i can see it there there so the first part of the book introduces the bahai kubo vegetables plus some of my other favorites which are not in the song right <laughs> but I, are. <laughs> I was singing and i'm like May alug bati ba in the song? No, it's not part of the song. <laughs> Wala rin <ang> palaya. Okay. <laughs> it's not part of the song but it's so, and even Malongai is not in the song, but um, it's stuff that I use, I love to use, right. and then um, readily available in every Talipapa grocery right. um, super, supermarket. You don't need a specialty store to right. access these vegetables. So those are some of my favorites. Um, beans, kajos, which is a, a negrente um, oh, bean. Um, yeah. We, Pigeon peas. So they actually eat a lot of it in India and okay. in the Caribbean. It's very big there. Here it's from Negros All right. um, in the Philippines. So yeah, that's a guide. Like those are my personal snippets of like tips, uh, nutritional facts. They're very short because I wanted them to be digestible. It's like when you read it, I hope that people will 
right. remember it the next time they're at the store to buy it. Right. And then you yeah. encourage everyone to eat seasonally. Do you want to? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm a big believer that nature gives you what you need when you need it. For example, now it's rainy season. You'll find that calabasa is um, cheaper. That's because it's high in um, uh, beta carotene, which fights uh, the flu and things like that. Also, like anything orange that um, is in season now, carrots, they're a little bit cheaper, save for the bugyo, of course, because I know like the prices surged like yesterday, right, right. Was, but in general, um, eat seasonally because it's the cheapest thing that you'll find. And it's also, you know, it's nature's time for it to be eaten. So all the nutrients are really there. Like you don't really have to force the soil to right. produce thing that's that's not in season it's um most abundant right and so you also have a a pantry guide so yeah. staples yes yeah, so the trick to eating plant-based is really to season your food well if you think about meat or chicken there's no taste like raw chicken or it's not going to taste like anything it's the same with plants um I, I chose these uh, flavor profiles because they're the most common and like they're the stuff that you find in any grocery. So that might cost a little bit when you're starting, but you know, it's going to last a really long time. Like just uh, spend a bit on your spices and your sauces and stuff like right. that. What's your favorite spice or like go to secret um mine is smoked okay. paprika okay um because smoked paprika will make anything taste like chorizo <laughs> really that's yeah. like a local plant no uh, it's not oh, so like oh, okay. in the flavor in the flavor pantry like i encourage you to go like to the to the supermarket to the spice section and just right, right. pick one of everything but Locally, they do have it. Locally, there is paprika. You can find it in little sachets in the talipapa. It's not smoked though. It's it's the smoke. oh, wow. What is it? Yeah, called? I've. It's the same paprika. Okay. It's just. It's also paprika. And my second favorite is curry. Believe it or not, they have that in the markets as well. It's in right. little sachets that they they portion. Um, right. But like, if it's not from there, my secret favorite is I think you can get it in Santi's. It's smoked paprika. That's like if I want my kids to think there's chorizo in the food, <laughs> that's what I'll put. <laughs> and there are other uh, plants that can simulate the taste of meat products that we like, right? Like there's always a portobello mushroom is always yes, like that's a always steak. a good one. Are there other vegetables that are kind of like um, or kind of like pork? My favorite is langka. Okay. So that um, we turned that into. We have a recipe on the site. It's pulled pork langka. Okay. Um, and here, uh, this is um, oh, this is a langka biryani. So that you you get like the same te texture as like a chicken or a, or um, yeah. I feel like it's more like a chicken texture in that particular right. recipe. Right. Um, we do pulled pork where you shred the lanka. And my new favorite, which is not in the book, but um, because it's new, I, d I discovered during lockdown, we make a lanka burger steak. So it tastes like the burger steak from a popular food chain. Really? <laughs> oh my gosh. Like I had people try it. They're like, lasang yung galing sa ano? Oh, oh, <laughs> With the sauce and everything. And the trick is really the sauce. Wow. Okay, let's look at the other things here. There's... Paella made mm -hmm. from? That's just vegetables that you find in a local market. Yeah, so it's sitao, um, calabasa, there's a pechay, there's eggplant. So anything right. that you can find in the palenque is there. And did you use saffron or did you substitute? No, um, there's something in the, oh my gosh, I can't remember what it's called right now. Right. There's a, there's a, there's like a spice that you buy there. So it's that, and this is colored with achuete. Okay. So we yeah. actually um, put oil first, and then you cook the achuete so that it gets that same color. 
But there's a there's a local version of saffron here. Oh, really? I cannot remember what it's called, but you'll see it. It looks like the the threads. Suba, is it? Yes, that one. Okay. Suba. Right, right. And then we have a mongo kare kare. That's my favorite. I love that recipe. If I say so myself, <laughs> that's one of my favorites. Like when you close your eyes, you imagine like it's just the flavor of kare kare with a bagoong in your mouth. Right. And is the texture of the mongo like ground meat or? No, like you'll feel like it's a it's a bean, but it's more like the flavor that you'll you'll get is like a real kare kare. Right. I love that one. So this is adobong puso ng saging, which kind of looks yes. like um, pork adobo. That's really good. Um, so for that, like I use none other than dato puti because that for me is like the most asim that you can find out there. Oh, really? Yeah, it's so sour. <laughs> um, yeah, that's that's a really that's a favorite as well. Puso ng saging. Oh, this one is a squash in a squash. So we bake the. We bake the whole squash. Oh. And you scrape scrape down the sides, right. and then you add the pasta and your vegetables. And it's a nice presentation because it's already in the. That's your bolna, the the squash. So that's a nice like holiday thing to do for the holidays. And this is regular pasta. It's just regular pasta. Right. And this one is your. Uh, oh, this one's good too. This is the upa. <laughs> Yeah, this is the upo lasagna. So instead of using uh, lasagna noodles, we used upo, very similar to how people make like moussaka or eggplant lasagna. We used upo for this. Um, and that's that's a crowd pleaser, I'd say. Like people really are like, what? It's upo. It's, and it's good. It's very yummy. Right. And this is your son's yes. tea. So this is tonight's version has tomato sauce because my daughter oh. likes tomato sauce. Okay. <laughs> so he made this for her. But yeah, it's hand rolled by children. <laughs> That's a really fun thing to do with your kids if you want to get them involved. And there's no baking. It's just mashed kamote with a bit of flour. Right. And then and this is this is our bibimbap but using local vegetables. So that's a lot of fun to do. And you can really use any vegetable that um, is in season. Right. And then this one I'm interested in. I didn't know you could yes. make pesto out of kangkong. Yep, you can. It's a little slightly slimy because kangkong is, but it tastes fantastic. It's the secret there is your garlic right. um, and your cashew that gives it that like extra cheesy taste but oh. that's really good you can put that on anything in fact we put that inside the lasagna so that's delicious so the cashew can simulate the parmesan cheese yes and then for extra we put nutritional yeast that's something that you can find in a health food store it's a one-off purchase you buy it and you can use it forever because you only use like very little of it and while you're cooking so if anything, that's a slight expense, but it's not even that much. Maybe 300 pesos for a bag. Right. This one, I love. I love laksa. Oh, this is by Happy. So Happy on Pakochu donated three recipes to us because we did something together last year for an Asian brand. And she turned the laksa into a vegan one. Um, it's, it's really good. It tastes clean. So there are no noodles? No, there are noodles. Oh, she uses okay. rice noodles, but um, there's mushroom, there's tauge, pechay, sitao, things oh. like that. Right. Like I said, the secret is really in your spices. So it's the same laksa spices she would use for a regular seafood one. And this is the lanka biryani. Yeah, lanka biryani. That's and really good too. Hurt. Oh, this is a fun one. It's sayote crumble. So it simulates apple crumble. Right, right. Um, you cook down the sayote, and after like 30 minutes of just simmering it in the pan, so all the water will come out, and you're left with this apple like texture. You right. season it the way you would season an apple pie, which is cinnamon, sugar. Uh, we use vegan butter um, for the crumble, but you don't have to. There's an alternative 
in the book not to use any butter at all. Wow. So this one, like with this recipe, I fooled people. Like they they thought it's it was um, apple. I never wow. thought I was saying really that. Wow. Yeah, I was shocked. <laughs> I remember before the apple pie of a uh, fast food chain was there's there were rumors like oh we yes think that it's sayote sayote but actually it would have been more nutritious right <laughs> I'm convinced they use sayote after oh, yeah. I made this I'm <laughs> like how can they afford to make it out of apple <laughs> apple is so expensive the right? <laughs> I'm convinced it's sayote <laughs> right okay so now we go to your um tips based on your own experience right yes so your first tip is to start slow yeah replace start with one meal a day so i know a lot of people that do meatless lunches on mondays um, eventually they progress to doing a whole meatless monday or meatless tuesday and then some people go okay i only now eat meat um Monday to Friday, Saturday and Sunday, it's all vegetables. So it really is like a slow progression. Um, and that's the only way that you're really gonna stick to it is if you do it in your own pace, don't feel pressured by anyone. Or you know what, even just the slightest, um, the slightest shift away from more right. meat, uh, from yeah, to, to less meat is helpful right. for your health, for the environment. So any little bit really helps. For you, how long did it take, like, or how slow did you start? Mm, I'd say, like, total transformation it took me about six months um, just to, like, take everything out. Six months, and that's, like, without, like, cheating. Or there was a time when we were like, okay, we'll only eat meat when we go to a restaurant. And then after a while, we were like, I don't need to anymore. Like, I don't really find that I don't have to do it anymore. So for me personally, six months, my kids a bit longer. Right. Um, like, like I would like say a year and a half. I've been pescatarian since 1991. But wow. I, I can't seem to give up oysters or <laughs> crap. Yeah, those are so good. <laughs> I, I understand. There's no substitute. Like there's some things that like, I'm like, man, I miss that. <laughs> <laughs> But I don't like I miss it and like but I don't I don't need to have it but it's you know, right. I definitely still I mean, miss it. You have delicious alternatives which brings us to number 2. Yes, stick to familiar flavors. So that's why in this book uh we have like mechado, adobo, bolognese. It's flavors that you're familiar with. You don't need to jump straight into like you know, some crazy just using lemon and salt. Right, like right, you don't right. need to go into that. Um, make it yummy. Make it delicious first, so you don't um, feel so kawawa. <laughs> so for you, what were these familiar flavors that you? Oh, those things that I mentioned: adobo, bolognese. I loved um, eating a lot of that. I still do. Like that's my comfort food is uh, my bolognese uh, to this day. Sinigang. Right. Um, I love that up to now. So those are my comfort comfort dishes. And then eliminate one by one. <laughs> one by one. So like with us, we started um, with red meat, so first steak, and then chicken. The last to go was fish, and right. the last last to go. You're not gonna eat oysters every day in a month, right? But um, that was the last to go was the fish, right. and that took us a long time because I was like. It's not so bad. Like, you know, how bad is it really? Right. I don't know. And yeah, so just one day we just made a choice. Like, okay, even that will will take yeah. out. And that that didn't come easy. It came with a lot of like reading and analyzing and like, okay, well, if this fish is the safest to eat, this wild caught Norwegian salmon, how much is it? Oh my gosh, it's 800 pesos for one like this. <laughs> like we can't afford that. Like it's crazy, it's too much. Well, so that took a really long time um, for us to get there. Reason. A huge one, uh, especially in the Philippines, like that stuff's expensive. The good stuff is very expensive. Right, for me, I'm always reading about how the octopus is so smart and you're all yeah. seeing videos right about 
octopi escaping from captivity because they're so smart. And so I kept trying not to eat octopus to the point of like giving up takoyaki, which is so yummy, right? Yeah, and pulpo, so good, my favorite. <laughs> I succeeded with the octopus. The other animals, we'll see. <laughs> One fish at a time, one marine creature. Yeah, I mean, that's really how to do it. Like, How about eggs? Yeah. Was it not hard for the kids? Because eggs are in baked goods, they're in... Yeah, so... Dairy, um, like, for, like, now, the kids don't... They don't eat um, any real ice cream anymore, or all their ice cream is plant-based. But once in a while, I will let them have, like, you know, a donut or, you know, they're, they're like at a birthday party with other kids. Yeah, they at a birthday or like um, if someone gives us a cake or like there's this gluten free cake um, that I love um, because I also don't take gluten because I've got celiac disease, but I love the chocolate cake. I know it's got egg and I know it's got milk, but. <laughs> But like for my birthday, like that's what I'll ask for. Or like Christmas, like I'll have like a couple of slices. So it's like baked goods are super difficult to um, eliminate from. For the most part, we definitely don't have it every day. But like we have like, I, I'll let them have a donut if it's right. if someone's birthday or, right. yeah. Or what do you Not do about stuff like pancakes? Do you have your own version? Usually. Yeah, we have um, we have pancakes that have um, that don't have egg, or there's actually our egg substitute is aquafaba, which is the water that you find in the canned chickpeas. So if um, three oh. tablespoons of that, um, if you whip it and you put a little bit of cream of tartar, it becomes like egg. So they actually turn that into vegan meringue, and it works. It holds. Uh, my my daughter bakes cupcakes using that. It holds everything together. So that's a that's a vegan secret. <laughs> I think we need a part two. <laughs> okay. <Yeah. laughs> Especially for kids. For me, yes. the, the way I was able to give up eggs was I would get eczema on my elbows. Oh wow! And I also yeah. heard from a, another video that I saw that your son's eczema went away too. Yes, you went. it did. It did. Um, so eggs, uh, chicken and eggs, actually, they have a lot of hormones in them just from the nature of like how uh, poultry and eggs are raised. It's a lot of hormones. So that's what causes the eczema. Um, so that's what we we gave up eggs. Like for my daughter, she since she doesn't have eczema, that was hard because she loves stuff like chawan mushi or like um, tamago, like I actually right. love that stuff and, and the Japanese restaurant. So that was a bit more difficult for her. Right. Um, but like the trays of eggs are, are gone now. Yeah. And how do you manage with social situations? Like in your house, fine. But like if you're at a party or everybody's eating out, how hard does it get? Or um, In the beginning, it was hard. <laughs> hard because people, I guess people didn't think that this was like a way of life for me. So they'd be like, okay, come to dinner. I don't know what to make for you. <laughs> so I'd be like, yeah, okay, I'll, I'll bring na lang a dish. I'll bring right. something to share. So there was a lot of me eating my own food at parties. Right, right. <laughs> um, and then now, you know, these same people who used to tell me like, I don't know what to make for you actually go out of their way to make something or if it's catered, they tell the chef, hey, I have a friend who's like this, like that, because I guess they really saw that, you know, parang it's really um, just something that we decided to do. And the, the good thing is more friends have like gone plant-based as well. Wow. So I think it's more than a trend. People are really seeing the benefits for their health. So um, from the time that I started to now, there's so people are so much more open-minded even right. chefs are more open-minded. So yeah, they, they'll um, cater to you more now. Right. So things are changing. I think so. It's a good time to be in Manila, uh, being plant-based also. There's like a lot of places that have uh, vegetarian menus or um, yeah, they like here, number four, meat substitutes. 
Um, so like they're like beyond burger, they're making the rounds in all I right. saw I even saw it in SNR the other day. Right. Um so that the, they're really making the rounds in hotels and high-end restaurants. So I'd encourage anybody to try that, the, the burger. It's delicious. So what are these meat substitutes? Um, that's probably my favorite, what Beyond Burger. Meat? It's made of pea protein. Okay. So it's the same, it's pea protein and beets for the coloring. Um, it's it's quite high in protein, but um, they put a lot of money and a lot of research into making it like that. And for me, it's great because it's gluten free. Right. right. Um, there's tofu is a meat substitute. There's a lot of like there's so many um, home small businesses now right, that right. Um, make these things, which are really good. And, and there's a place called the Vegan Grocer. There's one in San Juan and one in Quezon City. I discovered they have, oh my gosh, I should send you because you're a pescatarian. Um, they call it shrimp. Oh my gosh, my sister's allergic to shrimp. Wow. We had a hot pot here the other day and she freaked out. She was like, what, what's that? And I'm like, <laughs> it's, it's fake shrimp. It, it's made with chickpea. Oh, and, wow. Um, it's like shrimp? It, puede na, puede na, like <laughs> shrimp. Like if you put it in hot pot with all the sauces, it's right. enough. And there's another one, it's tilapia, and it tastes like a fish cake. Wow. It tastes like something fishy. So it looked so realistic. My sister was like, I don't know, are you sure? Because I'm so allergic just looking at it, it's making me allergic. I'm like, it's vegan. Vegan, yeah. there's nothing, there's no animal in that. So there's so, so many now that right. you can try. Right. I used to, make to go the switch. To, uh, Chinese vegan place, but I found out that their meat substitute was seitan, which is made of gluten. Gluten. It's like pure gluten. I'm super, right. like, I'll die if I eat that. But right. it's super, super allergic. But there's a lot of um, products that they bring in from Taiwan. So apparently Taiwan makes a lot of these. They're gluten-free, made with tapioca, starch pea starch um really really good i will send you some shrimp wow. and tilapia. Yeah. right <laughs> number five which we already buy the cookbook. <laughs> where can we buy the cookbook so the cookbook's available on shopee lazada and national bookstore that's probably the best way to order it uh online now right so mesa and mises is more than a cookbook right it's Actually, a nonprofit org. Yes. Uh, you want to tell us about how you started it? And so it yeah. went um, developing the recipes really went hand in hand with um, my personal mission to try and teach more underprivileged people to eat right. more plant based. So, from teaching in a basketball court, we have like expanded. Um, to helping people plant community gardens in their schools. Like our team, Mia, we have, she's a certified, I like to call her a certified farmer, but I'm sure there's a better term for that. Right. But she's like certified in agriculture so she can teach she um, people in, in schools. Unfortunately, we were about to start um, planting more, more uh, school gardens when lockdown happened. Right. Um, in the last year, we partnered with Maxi Care, and our food is actually now available in hospitals. So, if you've mm. ever been checked into a hospital, you'll find the food is not exactly healthy. They'll give you tocino right. and right. tapa, and you're like, "Where am I in the <laughs> hospital?" Um, so, we actually uh, partnered with Maxi Care to bring plant-based options to these um, hospitals. During lockdown, we reached out to a lot of people, orphanages, home for the elderly, frontliners. Um, this, this picture here is called Market Nemesis, where we help bring in produce from um, Nueva Ecija, from places where people couldn't get their produce in into lockdown barangays. And we sold it, no profits, everything straight to the farmers. We just organized this with the LGUs. And again, it's the attempt to bring more 
vegetables, make them available to more people. Because I really think that's a big part of it. If they don't know that it's there, um, or if it's not affordable for them, they're not going to access it. Uh, right. This is our soap program. So that's just like, Mesonimus has became like a whole, a holistic thing where we now, um, when you, I found that like when you eat plant-based, you start to care about the environment, about recycling, repurposing, everything just kind of comes together. So the SOAP program is we work with hotels and we collect their old SOAP and we bring it to the, the schools um, and the communities where they can repurpose the soap and resell them instead of buying from the Sari Sari store, they can also use it. The, the school uses it in their bathrooms instead of buying now. Right. Let me know if you want to talk about any of these pictures, but I think um, I'm loading. Yeah. So, yeah, that's that's the a lot of stuff that we did like during lockdown. This is in a hospital kitchen. Oh, okay. Um, where we did so like when the hospital adopts our program we do a kitchen training for them um so now we're in three hospitals uh vrp medical center medical city and manila medical um and in the canteens you'll find like at least one tray of plant-based food and the amazing thing is that in these places once they started offering the plant-based meal as an option, people were actually buying it. So oh, cool. if people see them postable material, so that's actually made of cassava and sugar cane, if I'm not mistaken. The so that, the containers, so oh. that will just melt wow. um, right away. Right. So it's just about like leaving um, less of a footprint on the earth with what you eat and like how you use it. Right. Um, how you get it out to people. Right. Did yeah. the hospitals tell you why they were providing such unhealthy meals? <laughs> no. They, <laughs> like there's it was, around. Yeah. Like I like I know. It was just hard. Like the hospitals um were what like that tough to crack, I have to say. It's really tough to crack. Um and I think it might have to do with the fact that like nutrition, like with most doctors is very, very limited. Like it's not a big deal, you know, like they don't think about like the cause. It's always medicine will be the band aid for it. Right. So, right. That's a I whole also, other. <laughs> I also saw a vid video of you explaining the vitamins in every vegetable in Tagalog. What was that for? And is it part of like <laughs> Uh, a bigger mission for you to spread awareness to people. Yeah, so that, um, I think the one you must have seen is part of our online classes. So we are partnered with uh, a school in Makati um, and we do like, uh, we supplement their online learning. So in that we have like Sarah Black who does the meditation. Um, my sister who is an artist teaches art. And we made her, we said, you need to use like basura, okay? <laughs> because we don't want people to buy new things. Use what you have around the house. I don't want people um, having to go out and buy paint. Uh, the vitamins and uh, veg the, the, in, in the vegetables in Tagalog. Right. Was, um, <laughs> oh my gosh, wow. That was a mouthful. But that's really my attempt to explain to people that you know, if you're eating properly, you don't need to spend so much on vitamins and all right. this stuff. And no amount of vitamins is going to cover up for your baboy or your um, <laughs> bestin that's in your food. And that's just something that's, um, I think, like, that's a big message that needs to go out there. So I probably need to, like, improve my Tagalog and get better but <laughs> oh, good, effort, good effort i understood everything and so for your family what are the vegetables that you eat for vitamins and what vitamins do they provide right so this here is again i keep showing this this is orange flesh kamote it's my favorite it's so sweet um and this is very very high in beta carotene which is good for my kids who are growing um 
I didn't have enough of it. This is a favorite. This is Talbos ng Sayote. So again, rich in vitamin A. Most kids, most Filipino kids are deficient um, in that vitamin. And I don't, I don't have it right here with me now, but another favorite of the family is chickpea. So we have a joke um, with my husband. He loves chickpea, uh, garbanzo, like, um, he eats it with everything. I turn it into hummus. The recipe is actually in the book um, under the upo lasagna. Um, I think like we would go hungry if we didn't have chickpea or <laughs> garbanzo in our house because yeah. he eats it with absolutely everything. And last is mongo, which is so, so, so cheap, so versatile and high in protein 23 grams of protein per uh yeah per 100 gram of mongo um so nutritious so those are my go-to's i always have that in the house always in the pantry right i have a, a question a personal question about mm -hmm. vegetables and bloating especially for grains and legumes yeah and i think you mentioned that you soak your your grains and legumes because of the phytic acid. Do you want to explain? Yes. It's actually, so, I'm actually sometimes turned off by eating vegetables because I get so bloated. And I'm sure- Absolutely. Um, to be honest, when I first went plant-based, I did get bloated, even constipated right. because of the amount of fiber that's in your body. We're not we're just not used to having that amount of fiber. Um, bread is processed, pasta is processed, so it goes right through you. Meat takes a long time. Um, so that's definitely a challenge, I think. Like that was something that I had to over, like my stomach be like, what is this? All I ate was like pasta, why is my stomach so big? It still happens once in a while, but um, as you mentioned, like grains and especially beans, I do soak it because phytic acid is an anti-nutrient. So it prevents vitamins and minerals from other fruits and vegetables from sticking, um, from staying in your body. Soaking that will get rid of it and it will also make it softer to get rid of the gas and the bloating. So right. with beans, I even soak my beans like for three days sometimes. Wow. If I have the time for it. Yeah, like I always have like water. something soaking. Yeah, just okay. tap water, just soak it. That should help with it. Right, great. Uh, what's your hope and dream for Filipinos and vegetables in general? Like a Miss Universe. Right. For me. <laughs> just kidding. Upangarap ko ay... Uh, kumain ang mga taong bayan natin mas madaming gulay magaling 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 <laughs> mas magul uh, mas madaming gulay para sa kanilang man what's the word for health kalusugan kalusugan, <laughs> kalusugan. um yeah it's really really about switching to more vegetables right. less meat is just good for the environment for your health, less processed stuff. And that's really my hope that Filipinos um, will be able to, like I really said, the goal of this is to make it affordable. So this book is 250 pesos for 40 recipes. Right. Um, I, I hope that people will go out and buy it. Um, give it, uh, I know I have some friends who give it away, but just for like the regular, like, for people who just want to make a start, this is a great way to do it. Right. Use it as a side dish and eventually maybe you'll like it so much that you get rid of the meat. <laughs> right. And I think a Tagalog version is in order. Yes, I might just have this translated. Right. <laughs> like here, translate the whole thing. Right. I, I think that's, um, I think that would definitely help, but really eating more vegetables, more fiber is good for everybody, more nutrients, more vitamins, less money on medicines, and um, just for everybody, less money for uh, vitamins, less money for hospital bills, more in the grocery, more money there. Great. Thank you so much, Juana. Thank you for Thank giving you, us Thank you, Mirza, for giving me a chance to push. <laughs> So that we can all take care of ourselves by eating healthy, because I think everything else follows once we are healthy. Yes, absolutely.
<laughs> Thank you, Wana. Thank you, Marissa, for having me. And more power to Mesa ni Mrs. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you, everyone. This has been Ask Ms. Mears, and we'll see you very soon. Bye.